Okay, so we're back for part two. And let me just show you, I've finished my rounds now. I have landed up with my first round of single crochets and then one, two, three with my half doubles. And that is the size that I'm going to make. So I suppose, let me see, here's my hand. It's kind of the width of my wrist. And generally, the back of the baby's head is going to determine how big you make that. And um, honestly, there's no hard and fast rule because every baby is different. And the neonatal unit or the ICU unit will actually just choose the hat that fits the baby. And so don't worry, just make lots of different sizes. Here is uh, the base of the hat. So let me just show you how I actually a finished a finished bonnet. So this is a finished bonnet here. Let me turn it around so you can see this is the bit that we've just crocheted. So once we've done this part in crochet, we're then going to switch over to knitting. And this is the base of the head. This is the neck here. And this is where the chin would be and the ear would be here. And this is the flap on the top, which can be opened for them to attach the ventilator pipes or tubes or whatever onto the baby. And then we're going to put a button on each of these sides here to make it nice and easy to open and close. So that is a finished bonnet. And you can see if I put my fist in there, how big that bonnet is. And I would say that's probably a good newborn or slightly small newborn size hat. And judge for yourself how you're going to make them. This little one in blue here has only got uh, one, two, three rows, but it is actually different yarn, so it's worked out much smaller. So if I fold this little hat in half, like that for you and I put it next to the one I did earlier which is a similar size to what I'm going to be making then you can see there's actually quite a difference in size um, from one to the other that's not very good but there you go okay so this one is definitely going to be for a premature baby um, but not a very premature baby this is probably going to be suitable for a baby that's a few weeks premature and the difference on this one is that I've done garter stitch at the top here instead of a stocking stitch but apart from that the whole hat is made in exactly the same way and then I've got another one here which is made in the same way and the flap is a stocking stitch with a garter stitch edging on it as well that's what we're making going back to our piece of work now this is when you're going to need your double pointed needles and your crochet hook still i'm going to pick those up and just drop them over here so they're easy to reach and we put our hook back into our work now we are going to pick up stitches along this edge that we um, would normally have just carried on the next round on and instead we're going to pick up a stitch we're going to put our hook through the loop but only the back loop so if you see there we've got the v's and i'm putting my hook only in the back loop of the v so let's see first stitch i just put it through the back loop hook my yarn, pull it through. I've now got two on the hook. This is a little bit like Tunisian or Afghan crochet if you've ever done that. And I'm going to keep going around the loop, around the edge, sorry, of the bonnet. And I'm going to pop a new stitch for every crochet stitch below. So for every half treble below, I'm going to have a stitch on my hook and then it's going to create this little ridge which I quite like for the edge of that. So carry on. You want approximately one third 
of your stitches on your hook first time round. Now some of you may be wondering why I'm using this very old fashioned sort of hook when there's so many lovely hooks out there with lovely handles. And this is exactly why I do it. If you've got one of those crochet hooks with the wire and a bobble on the end, that's also a good one to use. But this allows me to do not only pick up more stitches because I've got a longer shaft, let's keep going, but it also allows me to transfer the stitches much more easily onto my knitting needle. So there you go. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. I'm going to do twenty because I've been doing these for a while and I get a good idea that the first row of stitches on the right side or the left side of the bonnet is going to need to be about 20 stitches it's about a third and then I take my double pointed needle and I slip the stitches off the crochet hook onto the first deep end and I, I, I push them off the back of the crochet hook and this is why the old-fashioned hook without the fancy handle is such a great way of doing this when I get to the last one, I push my needle all the way through and I've now got my first lot of stitches on there. So that's one side. I'm now doing what will become the flap and I just pick up the next stitch um, the same way as I did earlier and I keep going around again, picking up. Now this time I don't want to pick up as many because I don't want my flap to be as big as the side. So I kind of do 20, 14, 20 and that's very much based on how many stitches and how big you've made it. So if you're making a much bigger bonnet with a double knit you will land up probably having 24 stitches and maybe 16 Whatever, just give it a nice ratio, same on each side and a few less down the flap side. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. I'm going to go with 14 on this one and I'm now going to push them onto a needle. And in this case, I'm going to use my um, Knit Pro because we're not going to be working on these stitches at the top of the hat which is where the flap's going to go for very long and it just helps keep them them out of the way if you're used to working with dpns then don't worry you can just put another d um d uh, double um, ended needle double pointed needle over here as well and it won't be in your way continue next pick up your next stitch one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, if you've forgotten, um, just unpick it if you don't do into the back loop only. So you only want to do into the back loop of your work because at the moment I've got the front of the bonnet facing me. That's the back of the loop. Now I've forgotten to carry on counting, but I'm going to go with I've probably got 16 or 17 at the moment, which is not as many as I would have normally had. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So I'm only one short actually, so that's not too bad. So I'll pick up the last stitch. If you have a couple of stitches left in the middle here, that's absolutely fine because what I often do with the bonnet is leave a couple of stitches unhooked. So two or three or even four is fine. That's the base of the neck. There's no problem doing that as well. In this case, I've only got one stitch left that I haven't hooked. And same as we did on all of the others, get another DPN, a double pointed needle if you're new to the lingo. 
and I'm just pushing them off onto the DPN off the end of my work and at the end of this little process we should now have three DPNs with an ear flap this side, an ear flap this side and this is the top of the hat so it would be like this and that's where the flap is going to go next thing we do is take our, our yarn turn around so that we've got the back facing us or the inside facing us and start to purl all of these stitches all the way around now you don't have to purl here, yeah? you could knit. This entire bonnet could be done in garter stitch. You could do a pattern. You could um, do moss stitch. You can do any design you want on this part of the bonnet. But, you know, I'm for now just doing a stocking stitch. And the first row, which is the yarn happened to be on the right side, which means the wrong side of this bonnet is facing me and therefore it's a purl row for stocking stitch. You adjust it as you need to. Right, so it's a little bit more awkward that first row because you've got a little bit of a tightness down at the bottom here. So I've done my first row onto the first one there. Now I'm going to use my oh, deep ends this little needle and myself aren't greatest of friends. Um, I find them very small to work with with my hands. Um, they are sock. Um, it is a sock needle. Knit Pro. I can't remember what its name is. Anyway, I'm just going to use the other end. If you use a longer knit pro needle with a longer cord or cable then this would be so much easier and of course if you're just going to use a double pointed needle that's also just as easy so for the first three or four rounds that's absolutely a design choice you are going to knit a uh, purl a row knit purl knit and going backward and forward not in the round because we do not want to close in the neck section of our project so keep going until you get to the end so i'm at the end of my second needle i'm going to just slide that off push them down so that they dangle the needles dangle there and i'm now going to get over to the other ear flap on the opposite side so I need a DPN for that so I just carry on and I'm knitting <laughs> I'm knitting but I'm purling into the back of the stitch because of the way they're lying if you are very used to knitting you'll know normally the stitches lie at a bit of an angle and you pick up your stitch at the closest one closest to you the stitch closest to you or the post closest to you I don't know what you would call it anyway but it's not important because it's not going to make any fundamental difference at all to how your bonnet will look and operate at the end of the day so if you don't know what on earth I'm talking about just ignore what I've just said get to the end of your first round so I've got 20 stitches, 14 stitches, and 20 stitches. And I've finished my first round I'm back here. And I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to repeat that row, knitting all the way back to here, all the way around to here, knit. Then I'm going to purl all the way back. When I've done that, I will come back and see you again so that's where we are at the moment we finished the crown and we've started our knitting this is where we picked up in the back of the stitch 
And that's how we get that nice ridge. See you back in a minute.